All right, hello and welcome to yet another episode of the Gosu Academy. Um, so basically, today I'll just get straight into it. I've got a really exciting topic in my opinion. Um, it is winning map control as T. Now this is one of the, I guess, most uh, important things to do on T side because obviously when uh, I do sessions, I do a lot of like uh, what I would call uh, macro level Counter-Strike talk. I'm talking about how do you get better as a team, how do you become a better support player, how do you get better at blah, blah, blah. But today, because I know a lot of people are solo queuing, I want to talk about how, in a solo queue, do you take space in an effective way. I will try to go through as many maps as we can, but at the same time, I would rather that we split it up into different sessions where we do all the different maps than um, doing one session where I am skipping over some things. I would rather give you guys the full information. So I thought I'd start on Anubis because um, it's one of the maps that my team right now is very good at and it's a map that um, is open to a lot of solo plays. You can take an awful lot of area alone as T and there are some plays you can do as well. So instead of always having focus on CT, I've showed you many tips and tricks and I've also shown uh, like I've gone through every position, how to play it and stuff like that. I thought basically let's do the same, but just for T. Let's go through kind of every position. Um, if you are playing towards A, how do you maximize uh, your output on A and how do you maximize your output on mid and so on and so on. So um, on top of this, if you are here from YouTube and you don't know what this is, this is the Gosu Academy. We do, um, I think, three to four coaching lessons per week and i am covering thursdays um, if you'd like to uh, try it out you can request a topic and you can also ask questions live that i will answer um, there is a link in the description where you can try it out for free for one month all you gotta do is just put in your um, details and it's like a money back guarantee thing so if you don't like it you will um, immediately be refunded that covers pretty much everything I had as an introduction, so let's just go straight into it. And I think we'll start, um, let's actually start from left to right, because that's easiest. So, on B, Anubis not is... streaming. That is a very good point, thank you. <laughs> I always forget this. You guys can see what I'm doing now, right? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. All right, so over towards the B bomb site, um, this is an area where basically all of the space that you're able to take before you enter into the bomb site has already been taken um, for you. Because most of the time, well, basically every time you can get here before the CTs can come out. So all this space is kind of yours. But I will say there are some ways that the CTs can fight for this, of course. There are lineups for flashes that go through the window that you have to dodge. And also, um, some CTs have a lineup. I don't know where it is because I'm not a big fan of the smoke, but where you smoke somewhere here. And I believe it fills up kind of the whole space. So now, as a T, you can see if the CTs push you. Um, this is not that dangerous if you give up this area, in my opinion, because um, it's very easy to retake as a T. As soon as the smoke fades, I mean, you can clear this uh, right side in a um, safe manner. And if they're not there, you can go and peek these angles and you have kind of advantage in all these because you can clear them from uh, up and down. Um, if you want to maximize your output uh, and create some pressure over on the T side, this is one of those uh, things that can do it. You can go here, aim here, this dot, and do a normal jump throw. I need to just find that real quick. Bump. This smoke is the common lurk smoke. And it goes over and blocks off the opening. So this, uh, sometimes you need to worry a little bit about the CT can be here. But what this looks more gives you is you can go either side. If you go up this uh, side, you have kind of a, a one-way type thing. You can work around the smoke. Same if you go right side, you can go towards the pillar. And this smoke is just annoying for the CTs because it's hard to hold both from any good position. If you're standing here in the middle, that's kind of the best place where you can see both. But... Um, you likely will lose the duel to the T if you're standing like that. So you typically have to decide, do I want to hold pillar side or jail side? And that's why this smoke is um, really good. I will uh, show it uh, once more. And also just tell you real quick that what a lot of people do is when the smoke comes in and lands here, 
you know they will peak this in a good way i know there are a few different ways you can throw the smoke a little bit different if you prefer but typically people crouch in here in case anyone is is up on this and then what a lot of people like to do is they will molotov jail and then even edge the molotov so that after the molotov they can go up here and, and play basically um there are a lot of other things you can do to maximize your output or st i don't know the perfect lineup anymore uh let me see i think it's like this maybe yes so there is a lineup i don't know the exact perfect lineup but this is the lineup i'm using um i'm not that good at it because uh, it's not something i've been throwing but there is definitely a lineup here where you can uh, hit a nade that goes down and lands here. i think potentially if you throw it more like over on this side it will bounce different there's at least a way to get this nade to bounce down um and hit right here above con that can be uh some decent damage at the start and then uh, other than this you know taking map control towards b uh i think this smoke is somehow pretty fatal sometimes but yeah, obviously there's the tempo smoke, there's the um, left side smoke, I'll just show you real quick because this isn't really taking map control. But um, in a way it also is taking space on B. So these are good to know and uh, that's honestly about it. Moving over to middle, there is this smoke that is very easy to throw from spawn if you're right side of the vent and you aim here on the top of the wood, normal jump throw. This is a perfect window smoke. With this, um, there are some running lineups, but they seem kind of inconsistent. Um, they they have to land very specifically for you to actually... Uh, yeah, clearly, I don't know the lineups either. I just... I'm trying to find the Molo lineup so you can see, first of all, how hard it is, but also... Um, like the idea of it basically um this molotov lands really deep in the door and pushes the ct very far back and even if i try to throw the molotov the exact same way it might fail now because it it just is kind of a finicky it actually seems to kind of work um you can try it out with practice this is consistent obviously as is anything else but um there is another lineup which is way easier to remember and, and easier to execute as well if you go here you aim here. This is the uh, normal Molotov that gets used. And as you can see, this one doesn't burn as far in the door. But it should still take all this area. And um, yeah, I guess the, the difference with the Molotovs as well is if you do this Molotov. The CT can typically play like a... Actually, this Molotov is pretty damn good. I feel like sometimes I can play an off angle here, but maybe they have been... Uh, they have been failed or maybe it's, it has even been the running one that you can uh, this one you can at least play off angle on still so yeah um decide which one you prefer just showing uh different options also there is this lineup if you go here and you aim let me see uh, is it like this <laughs> don't think so right no um I think it is this one instead this is a double click but is a way of throwing the window smoke for yourself when you are closer and um, it can be a pretty nice lineup to know because in a way it's better to throw it from close than from far so instead of doing it from spawn if you do it from here the smoke is up for a longer time that can be an advantage and a disadvantage but for solo queuing um, I want you guys to know this um kind of combo of nades which allows you to take the uh, space around mid basically and then on top of this i'll just show you this smoke in case you ever use it if you get stuck in here and you aim here where the where the black meets the leaf basically and you do normal jump throw i think this is a temple smoke uh, it's pretty close let me try it once more i guess maybe you really have to aim what the black. I think if you aim a little bit more to the left, it will land better. Yes, there we go. So this is also just, you know, if you're playing solo queue with someone who is taking the space in mid, 
this is maybe a smoke that can help you take further space. Okay, taking space towards uh, water and winning the map control here is something that can be done in a few different ways. What is very common is people will go here and they will aim here and do a normal jump throw. And this smoke hits the back of the wall, hits here and lands um, kind of inside connector. This makes it very hard for the CTs to contest this area and it um, allows you to go close water unless the CTs obviously like nade the smoke or otherwise uh, fight this area. But me personally, for solo queue, what I much prefer is a move that I've invented myself. If you get stuck into this corner and you put, well, I put my view model here, like I put my smoke here and do double jump throw instead. I've shown this before in the academy, but I think this is extremely effective. Smoke goes over and it lands at the back of connector instead. The common reaction for the CTs is that they will smoke outside connector like this and play inside connector. But there is a uh, counter to this. Typically this corner is open. You can line up your model like this, go back to this corner, take a running step. This Molotov burns everything over here and everything else can be spammed away because there is only this small area that the CT can now play in. Um, you can either spam it or if you want, you can also you know, do the Molotov and then nade the smoke and then be sure. But typically, if you have a smoke um, at the back here and the CT smoke here, just to, sh to uh, allow you to visualize it without the CT smoke, do one running step, this is burning. The CT can basically only be in this corner, so through the smoke I can spam this. And if I don't get a kill, when the Molotov is still burning, I can just walk through and I've uh, now taken this map control by myself. Now, this uh, move that I've invented is uh, even better, in my opinion. Not only because you can uh, much better take the space of connector, but also because um, with this smoke, it actually allows you to walk through the connector smoke and first peek jail with a lot of cover. If he's not jail, um, you can keep searching CT, search here, and you can keep searching dark. And it is uh, a really unexpected play for the CTs because basically no one is doing this. Even if they are playing jail, they are typically looking this way and you can actually kill them if you go through the smoke. To even, uh, I guess, upgrade this move a little bit. When the smoke is up, What you can do is come here and I think aim like this. You can go to the back wall, you can throw a Molotov. Uh, hang on, I think it's a little bit higher. Maybe, maybe like this. Let me try it again. Yes, okay, let me, let me throw the smoke one more time and I'll, I'll show you basically um, how we can abuse the edging of, of the smoke here. So, if the con smoke is up, it's very safe to stand here. You can aim up from this mark and between this, like that. You can move on over as soon as you cross the street of the wall. You move out this, and now you know no one can be pillar. You can walk through and you can edge the molo to clear jail. Molotov makes it even more difficult to see you in the smoke and makes the clay way more unexpected. And by doing this, you can, you know, check and then you can check CT and you can keep moving forward. So this is a uh, super good way of not only taking the map control that is uh, towards Con in a solo way, but also um, making a aggro move to try and open up the B side. So that's really cool to know. And um, yeah, I think that kind of covers three out of four ways of tipping like uh, three or four areas to take map control on Anubis. I will show you uh, one more. Like, if you are playing with people that you know, there is uh, this flash, which is just super simple. You just bounce it off, and with this flash you can go in, try to take space. If there's an AWP player here or a rifle, 
you can uh, push them back and um, that is you know super helpful otherwise if you're just standing here and you aim right around here you can do a w jump throw and i think maybe even the further the better because you can throw it more to the right but this flash if i'm not mistaken at least will take um people oops what is it this is not going well guys it should take people here and i'm not sure i don't think i mean it will not take an orb up here but if an orb is peeking out here or anything like that um you will uh, be blinding them so this is a flash that's nice and all but since the focus of this session is how to take them up control solo i want to share with you this smoke you can go in front of here you can aim oh god maybe on this dot and double click jump throw let me see i think this works yeah yes i mean it does it does it does work um for this what you need to know is uh try to get in like this and crouch under it potentially because some good ct players will boost here and they will even be able to see you when you try to sneak in so i mean crouching here can sometimes allow you to see them without them seeing you from this same position uh, and maybe it's even just here i think this might be a slightly better lineup but either way you can pair this up with just a flash on this which uh just helps you take the space and um yeah it's a super simple way of taking map control alone as a t-sided player here on anubis uh to give you a different lineup and I, I don't actually know the perfect lineup here, but it is pretty easy to do on feeling. If you're down in the water here, or even if you're here, you can uh, bounce a smoke like this. And I think it will mostly fill up. Okay, I guess if you aim it uh, maybe above the door, the lineup will be better. Yeah, above the above the middle of the of the gate here is is great. But if you aim above the middle of the gate, and then I believe you can aim somewhere on this pillar. This would work. So that you Molotov out the close corner. And I think if you aim maybe more on this dark dot, the Molotov will land more like this. And you can, you know, use the Molotov and the smoke to take the space. Same thing is relevant though. CTs can still boost over it. So... Just keep an eye out for that. And if you, whatever, feel really afraid of that, there is the option of you to just bounce any shit flash in the smoke that, you know, if they've assembled a boost, they will have to dodge it and you can, you can take the space. Sorry, that's my WhatsApp as well, if you are watching this on YouTube. Um, so, yeah, I think that kind of covers basically how to take um, all of the important map control on Anubis. Um, I am on purpose not talking that much about how to basically end the rounds because I could show you uh, how to do that as well. But I think that could be uh, for another session. All I'm trying to teach you is this area of A main. How do I take this in a way that is hard for the CTs to counter? The same with taking mid control. How do I take this space in a way that is hard to counter? On B, as I mentioned, this space is like the space right before the bomb site is basically for free so instead we talk about how do i effectively pressure the site and then for connector we talked about again how to take connector and then also a little bit how to kind of abuse when you have connector so um yeah in my book that covers anubis uh t side winning map control are there any questions not for me perfect then I will just move on into the next map. Um, I think I will just go to Ancient. So, oh, I forgot to do it correct here. Um, So 
So for Ancient, um, that is a pretty different map. Um, taking the map control towards B is basically the same as entering the bomb site. Like just like uh, Anubis on B, the space just before the bomb site is typically free. Um, but I do have some things to say. We can obviously talk about taking cave control. Um, we can talk about we can talk about taking mid control, and uh, also on A, it's kind of the same that the A space is uh, free, but we can still um, definitely bring up some things. So. Just like on Anubis, let's start left to right. Um, taking the, like winning the map control on Ancient A, it can actually sometimes be a bit of a fight. Um, typically, you will take this map control with only one player. And when I say map control, I mean, I'm just talking about uh, A main. A main is a place that is kind of interesting because... If the CT has the front spawn and he wants to block A main deep, he can do so by just throwing a Molotov and, um, you know, moving right side, for example. And then afterwards, smoking it off. If a CT does this, there isn't a whole lot you can do as a T except wait. Um, taking the control aggressively like this, a CT, is something where... Yes, you are delaying the T's from going A, but it is wasting your blocking util in case the T's were not planning to go A in the first place. And if the T's were planning to go A, there's always the option as a CT to just jiggle with a Molotov or smoke, and when you get contact, drop the Molo or smoke here, and, and just fight to the death, basically. Um, there is one advantageous uh, position that i'll just talk about real quick as a ct why this could sometimes make sense to do in my opinion um some people try to play like this off angle or, or like this or even something like i don't know like this um some people even try to i guess play something like this which is like an off angle and if um you know someone comes this way you kill them but this opens you up to the fact that if someone walks this way they will see you and kill you for free um, again, there is one position you can get into if you smoke deep, and that is this one. I think this one is extremely overpowered, um, and it's because you can see this small area. So if the T's are moving, you know, this way, they will typically go um, like this. And also, if they know you can have a main space, they will, you know, be walking in like this and maybe be clearing this way. And as soon as they do this, you will have a ki free kill in the back, and you can try to attempt the second kill. Um, this is kind of irrelevant, but also kind of relevant for um, taking map control as T, or like winning map control, because um, winning the map control towards A, it isn't always something you can do at the start of the round if the CT really wants to block your deep. But I'm just trying to explain why if the CT blocks you deep, it rarely is a problem as a T and you can just wait out the smoke and um, retake it, basically. Um, so winning the A main space is not really that difficult because, yeah, again, if the CT wants to block you deep, just, just wait. <laughs> um, one thing that is worth knowing um, that I think a lot of you know amateur players won't know is as soon as I move out here Because there is a big light here as you can see my, my shadow starts showing and if I'm moving this way My shadow will be showing for any CT playing big box or playing uh, temple and they will know ahead of time That I am coming towards a if we have multiple people here They will be able to tell multiple people are here. So a really big thing when winning or taking the map control in a main is if you're going from the right side try to crouch under this light as you can see my shadow is way different and i think even if i don't want to crouch i can still just move like this and they won't see the shadow but try to always move up on the right wall like this shadow is showing but now i can step out and it will be surprising basically if you're going from the left side this is not a worry your shadow isn't really shown anywhere because there isn't any light sources in here and um, the rules are different.
But again, winning this map control as a T towards A isn't very difficult because uh, naturally it will be an area you have kind of for free without using utility. Um, what can sometimes happen is an AWP will peek you here. And I guess a small tip for this is if you are afraid that the CTs are peeking A main, this can be a really good A sheet to throw and you can run left side pretty early. They will be slowed and um, will be slightly low if they are there and uh, can be a way to kind of uh, help you win the map control. Okay, talking about how to win map control in mid ST. This is um, pretty difficult to do start of the round and is honestly something that in solo queue is almost impossible. Um, on Anubis, basically everywhere you want to take space, it's possible for you to do in a solo manner. Um, but there will be maps where this is simply not possible. And I think one of the, the most key pieces of utility when talking about mid control is, is this smoke. You can throw them from spawn, but I like to go in front of this rock. I aim along this line and on this small branch and double jump throw. This one goes over and lands perfectly in the uh, red room. This piece of utility is super key because it allows you to run out and not have to worry about the headshot angles. And um, if you are retaking mid, that smoke paired with this Molotov is um, very good for taking um, back map control um, in a round, basically. The reason why it's like winning map control as T solo in mid is so difficult is because if you want to take the fast space in mid and you try to do this smoke, you will be too late to actually contest mid control because what good CT players will do is they will either do this Molotov, which goes all the way deep, and pair it up with this Molotov, basically making a chain of Molotovs that uh, you can't pass through. Or what they will do is from spawn, they will do a, a mid smoke just for the sake of not having to restart. I'll just do the mid smoke from here, but they will be doing this mid smoke. And then afterwards we'll be doing the same kind of Molotov. This Molotov lands and you know that the... Uh... Oh, actually it's, I failed it a little bit, but basically this will um, block you very hard. And what the CTs will then do is after the smoke and the Molotov, they will swing with two and try to clear in front of the smoke. And uh, yeah, it's hell. Um, it's difficult to win this fight. And I think, uh, yeah, I, I don't really know what to say. As a, as a solo T-sided player, this is almost impossible to win. Um, just to show what your options are basically is if CTs do this uh, combination you can edge and go through and hold and try to get a kill that can be a pretty good move if the CTs instead do uh, double molotovs there is another move you can do which also relates to um, edging as it's called let me just wait for this. so basically if someone would do you know this molotov and this molotov what some people do is, as they're running over here, they will throw a smoke like that. Smoke pops, and you can uh, play the edge of the, the Molotov. Um, sometimes it will still be burning, the deep one, or even the, the closer one. But at least you can use this to kind of get an off-angle kill. I think if I would have thrown the smoke a little bit closer, it would have given me a, a sort of better angle. But this even would have worked. Um, these are some solo plays around mid you could uh, try if you would like. But fighting for this control is just pretty difficult. There are some people who have uh, spawn lineups. Um, there are three spawns, at least three spawns, where you can throw a spawn smoke that goes over. And it lands here at the same time as the CT Molotov. This makes it so um, when the smoke is thrown, you can move around it and try to use this to take mid control. It's typically paired with this smoke. Um, but again, this smoke in itself is not that strong. And especially if you're the one throwing this smoke, you will be so late to mid that you can't use the smoke anyway. So 
Winning map control early round as T on Ancient in mid is basically impossible to solo or you have to do something crazy. Um, you have obviously also the option of, you know, just coming here and underhanding a smoke and running out like a crazy madman. But again, that is a pretty low percentage play um, if you don't have any uh, support. Just to talk about <clears throat> how to win map control as T in case you are a team. Um, it's possible to do this smoke uh, by hand and having the window smoke from spawn. Whoever is throwing the window smoke uh, can have two or even better three flashes. And if you throw a flash that lands up here, um, I'll show you how it looks for the CTs. This flash or even one that, that lands more towards here will blind the CTs but won't blind your teammates. And typically what you want to do is you want to be doing the first flash like up here and doing the second flash over here. Uh, that was pretty bad. Doing the second flash over here because as the CTs are getting blind by this first flash, they will naturally back off. And as they are backing off, they might be going donut. And then the second flash um, instead is the one that will take them. Um, I guess you can throw this one a little further. But still, you want to try and land it in a way where, uh, ideally, it doesn't blind your teammates at all. But if they get the timing right, they are scaling up like this. Flash pops up here behind them and um, they won't be blind. So what I like to do is I like to do one flash like this and then do two flashes like this. If I have an extra flash drop. Because then the donor players um, will get blind by the first flash and if they try to re-aggress they will get blind by the second flash as well. But again, it requires coordination and that is um, what's difficult. Okay, an awful lot of talking. Um, I'm very yeah, passionate about Counter-Strike and um, this is one of the really important topics. Um, part of the reason why I am also uh, <laughs> talking so much is because this is something that is so essential that to be a good Counter-Strike player, you have to have a really good understanding of this concept of winning map control. Um, basically every piece of utility on a T side is either about um, winning map control, faking, or like finishing. So either we want to, you know, use smokes where we can win area that will allow us to have an easier time in the round, or we can use, you know, um, smoke grenades in mid, but then not use mid at all with the idea that we um yeah i guess are uh taking mid but then using some other area so that's a fake or we can use it to finish which is like executing on a side right um moving on though to cave cave is a uh, area that can be pretty difficult um to to take let me see actually if I remember this lineup. How was it again? Uh, was it like this? No. Actually. Well, this was definitely not what I wanted. Um, sorry, guys. I need to see if I can end the smoke real quick because this one is actually pretty nice to know. Um, still not. I feel like this smoke is actually not that difficult, but I don't remember. Wait, is it like this? No. Uh, the problem is I don't even know where to stand, honestly. Basically, there is a smoke. Um, maybe even someone in the academy here knows the lineup, but a smoke that lands here for heaven. Anyone know it? Uh... Shifter, you threw uh, some that is there. <laughs> I don't okay. know and have smoke. No, sorry, that's all good. Um, there is a lineup for this, and I am fairly certain it's not that complicated. Like, probably you can even get away with doing something like this. Uh, 
so close. But anyway, there is a smoke, and I feel like it bounces like this or something. Um, but anyway, there is a, a way to smoke heaven. Um, if I, you know, was a, a player still, this is definitely a smoke I would go and find because it's very helpful with uh, taking cave control. But um, this is a um, smoke that can be very good. An alternative to the smoke if you don't know it. And this is good for solo queue as well. But you obviously have to have people understand what you want is um, if I want to go and take cave control, what is a really common piece of utility is to get your mid player to come and do a monster like this. Um, this makes it so the CT can uh, early climb heaven. And so you don't really need to worry about this area because there is a motor here. Um, taking cave control is, uh, I think, not that difficult. But it can be if you have to uh, be worried about heaven. I'll show you that one more. Yeah. Um, I found the, the smoke that you wanted. Yeah, perfect. I, uh, I sent you, send it you the video. Okay, let me check it. Uh, is it on, on my Discord? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, send it in DM. Okay, but I, I can wait. I can also post it like here in the classes for uh, everyone. Yes, let me let me just uh, watch this real quick because it's actually a really nice smoke to know. I, I almost had it. I love not out here. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm doing it right, but it looked like he went here and aimed. Somewhere here. Um, I don't think this. Okay, actually, this somehow worked. I think probably I didn't lower, aim I the think. perfect place. Yeah. Uh, I think a bit lower, but yeah. That's... Like this? Or here? Maybe? I think it was somewhere in the in the lad. I mean, both of these seem to work, kind of. Yeah, maybe, let, let me try it one more time. Because if we can actually find this smoke, it's kind of nice. Okay, something in between that. It was next to the tree, the light the on the on the on the wall. Like there's a small a light. Let me, let, me, let me bring up the video, but actually open it properly in YouTube because this smoke is good for you guys to know. Let me see. Okay, so he stands here and he aims. Oh, yeah, I see it. Okay, so it's like this, basically. At least according to the video. Yes, that is pretty fast and good. Okay, perfect. We solved the mystery. Thank you so much. So, um, this smoke can be good to know, as I said. Otherwise, an alternative that works better for solo queue is if, if you want to help your teammates, you can use this Molotov. Um, and uh, I'll show you another model stuff you can use, but this one is a little bit tricky. Definitely needs some practice. Um, I'll show you kind of in slow motion first, and I'll show you in real time after. But if you go here and you aim here, there is like a, a spot that goes up. You aim at the top and you run and you jump through. It, you kind of, I think, actually have to stand next to the door. If you go in here, it will like push you a little bit sometimes. But basically, if you aim here, you get a model stuff that lands in here. And most of this side of cave, but extremely fast. If you want to do it real time, I mean, you can just run over here, but this takes practice. You can do it like that, and you get the same result. Um, this Molotov lands so fast that the CT, even if he has front spawn, has to decide if he wants to go in front of this to fight. And if he does want to go in front of this to fight, he is basically locking himself in. So, um, that is uh, a risk for him to take. An alternative to this is to run up here and just throw a Molotov like that. This um, pushes the CT again either back or forwards. And if he gets pushed forwards, you can always do these info jumps. You can check if he's out. If he is out, you know you can you can try to peek him or you can maybe even you know do an info jump, bounce a bad flash, wait for the flash, and then swing or something like this. But this Molotov on the right side is pretty essential when taking cave control because if you don't, there are so many angles that this guy can play that are frustrating. Like 
here, 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 here. You can even play like this or play with up. And um, also, especially if you're taking cave a little bit later, it um, helps you with taking the control because you only have to worry about one side, basically. Now, I showed this in last session, but if you want, there is this Molotov lineup. You stand here and you aim uh, here and you take one running step. This one burns up on this box and it burns up on this and uh, will clear out any close corners. I think you can even go here and aim maybe here as well. So if they are, the Molo is gone and you want a fast lineup, if you stand on this rock and do kind of the same uh, lineup, it will give you the same result. This one is extremely key, but can be a little bit tricky to get uh, done in solo queue, especially at lower levels. But if you stand here and you want to help your teammates take map control in cave, you can aim here and do this Molotov. This one, Molotovs, the B players out from fighting cave and um, is again a very effective way to either push the CT who is standing or jiggling here with the smoke, pushing them into cave or pushing them out of cave. And it's also the case that if an AWP is playing here, this Molotov again pushes him forwards or backwards. So this Molotov is, uh, is very, very good to um, have. Um, if you want i'm not really sure when you would use this um but here's the lineup you can go here you can aim here and do a normal jump throw um if you know that the cts jiggle here a lot or play with op here is a smoke lineup that that makes it so they can't do that anymore and i guess in some cases if you are playing solo queue you know you could um if our teammates throw a heaven smoke or if you for some reason know that the cts are not fighting heaven a lot you can come and do this molotov and after the molotov is, is faded you take this space now as the molotov is fading bounce a flash left side you go take the space and this smoke will allow you to clear the close corners without um outside in interference basically well, i guess this smoke does have some use in taking the space but it's not a must um, it's just to give you guys more ideas. Okay, again, an awful lot of talking, but we are working our way through uh, Ancient here. So, um, taking or like winning map control towards the B ramp is again kind of easy because you know you have until this line for free the majority of the time. Um, it is when you go out here that you can get caught by by um, long. You could have a CT jiggling with smoke. You could have an AWP playing this off angle, which a lot of AWP players take. And um, because of this, this is still area that can be contested and can be difficult to take. One of my favorite things to do is um, what I call the fascia jump. It is just jumping here for information. If there is, you know, an AWP standing here or, or a rifle player, um, I will get that information. And if I have an HE, if I just throw an 8 like this, it is um, definitely damage dealing onto the long player. I think, you know, maybe if I throw it a uh, walk throw, it's even better. This will deal something like 30 damage to someone playing in this space. And... Um, it will also make them slow. So if they're jiggling, you know, jiggling for them is is um, doesn't feel as nice anymore. And also, um, it can be you know something I peek with. So I do the nade, and then I peek with it, and I try to um, fight the long player. Um, this is uh, one thing to do. Another thing to do is if I have a Molotov, sometimes I like doing this Molotov. Uh, okay, maybe not exactly like that. Um, maybe more like this, I guess. It basically removes the possibility of someone, you know, pushing or jiggling with smoke. And uh, it just gives me the feeling that I have more space. Plus, um, maybe even on this flower. This Molotov makes it so the long player has a harder time of seeing me. So it gives me a feeling that I can take more um, space, basically. Uh, I'll give you an alternative as well. 
if you stay in the middle of this flower, you crouch and you aim here, and you do a normal jump throw. If I didn't mess it up, this is the normal long smoke, and so this will remove the possibility of someone jiggling. I, yeah, it does remove the possibility of someone jiggling. Potentially, you could, you know, combine that with this Molotov on the flower, and now this is definitely a way where you can take space. Um, also, just a, a small hint, peeking on this wall close like this gives you some, you know, unique angles where a CT you're maybe not prepared for it. But also a lot of CTs like to play with orb here or here. And just so everyone is aware, if you are crouching like this, you are crouching under the orb angle and you can actually peek up all of a sudden or even crouch under it and, and make it across. So um, like you could you could crouch under it and peek up in the orb here. And if he's playing deep, you won't see you and you can move on up. Um, so there is that. There is also um, another smoke, which I really want to mention for this, that uh, was extremely meta in Face It for a while, and I think it's gone out of meta again, um, but it honestly had a whole lot of promise. Um, again, this is a smoke I don't know the lineup of, but some people had a uh, lineup for a Lurk smoke. Again, maybe someone knows it here. Uh, the Lurk Smog I know. Yeah? Yes. Where am I standing? Um, yes, on... Um, but let me think how this... <laughs> uh, actually, wait, I don't know. I took a... Uh, a screenshot perfect it's like but you need to stand like a, more, a bit more to the right um over here uh yeah yeah and and then it's like a picture oh yeah i was i will check uh, on my phone here real quick did you send it to me in dm as well uh okay. i can send it and the to you. Good, yeah, because the smoke is actually really nice uh, for people to know as well. And it's really an interesting and deep smoke. Yeah, I uh, it. Okay, so that is right here. And a normal jump throw? Uh, it's W jump throw. W jump throw, let's try it. That does seem to land exactly where we want it. So. This is a, a CS2 specific smoke, and uh, the reason I say that is because this was just not doable in a CSGO, but because of the way volumetric smokes uh, fill up areas and also just the fact that they are kind of bigger in CS2, um, having a smoke land in this area means that you nullify the information from the long player you nullify the information from the, the AWP and it makes it so the only two angles where you can actually hold the map control towards B is here and here. And what a lot of people will do, which is like super annoying to play against this, they will be doing... Bro, I already forgot it. Oh, here. Uh, oh. What people will do is they will do this smoke at least this was what they did when it was meta in Face It, and this was really annoying to play against. Then they will Molotov Pillar, so that you can't stand here. And then they will go here and just spam the wall everywhere. So that if you try to play an AWP on Pillar, for example, to keep the, the information, then you will uh, be Molotov out of position, so you can't stand here. So either you have to stand here where you will get spammed, or you have to play in the cubby where you will also get spammed. And it's just um, a, a really bad time. Some people even do it that they do the smoke, and then they do the Molotov, and then they wait for the Molotov to basically fade. And then when the Molotov is about to fade, then they have a lineup spam where they spam as soon as it fades. So that if someone is 
standing here and waiting for the Molotov, as soon as they get into position, now they're getting spammed. And um, this is honestly a really strong way of um, fighting for and winning map control as T on Ancient. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I've talked about it in a previous session, uh, I think, about how to play CT on Ancient was a session I did right about when this kind of utility was, was meta. And I talked about how to deal with this as CT because a lot of people don't know how to deal with this as CT. Um, even, you know, at, at really high ELOs, like professional, uh, maybe not pro professional players, but like the top puggers out there, there's just been an ELO reset. So, um, you know, players who are around 3K ELO, but otherwise before the ELO reset, even people who are like 3.5K ELO don't necessarily know how to play against this uh, combo. And um, if you're interested in learning more about it, you can check um, my ancient sessions um, on my YouTube here, my, my second YouTube channel. And uh, if you skip around, you'll be able to find the, the answer to this question, basically. But this is a really interesting way of putting a ton of pressure on B and winning the map control towards B um, and, and make the CT's life a living hell, basically. So uh, I think that kind of covers, again, all the map control that you can kind of take. Um, I guess one more thing that I will say, if you are a T and you want to uh, take, like if you already have mid control, you can do this smoke, which is, it is actually pretty interesting, but not really any teams are doing it. Um, if you do the deep donut smoke, this one you eliminate all the angles on this side for the cts basically except the close angle here which isn't as good so if you do just any bounce flash that takes the close corner here you can bounce a molotov on the back like that which will burn this side and it will allow you to clear the left side without having to worry about anything else um when the donut smoke fades you will have basically donut control and it is a way of taking donut control in a really really safe way where you're already um how can i say you're not just taking donut control but you are actually taking donut control so deep that you're already putting pressure on the cts uh, when you take the donut control essentially um so so yeah that kind of covers how to win my control as t on uh, ancient i guess uh, let me see how is it again does this smoke work almost um, i think this will work if you have a uh, red room control here's a smoke for you to uh, split a i guess this is also an aspect of taking control um yes any questions you show the deep donut smoke again? Yes. Um, I'll show you two ways to line it up. You go here. And the way people started throwing it was they crouch. And then they would put the crosshair here. And they would stand up and then jump through. But you get the same effect by just, you know, going here and standing up. And aiming between the two windows. And doing normal jump throw. It bounces here, bounces there. And then bounces down and lands. Um, like this. And this smoke can also be good if you're, you know, taking A, because then it acts as a as a shield. So like you don't even need to fight. You can you can mold off this. Okay, not like that. You can mold off this, this early space, um, even from a position that is pretty hidden, and it will burn out all this area if you do it right. And then this deep smoke will allow you to to uh, plant well for donut. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Perfect. Any other questions? Other... Okay. If there are no more questions, I think um, I will go through map control on Mirage real quick as like a, a last thing here. Because um, I think this won't take that long, but it will be still interesting um, for you guys. So, oh no, I did it wrong again. Typical me. There we go. 
Um, we're obviously covering like the the easiest maps basically on how to take map control, but it is um, the most played maps as well, and it is also the maps where taking map control solo is the easiest. So I'll start from uh, left to right again. Taking space in a house is extremely easy. You literally just walk in. Um, any space that you can get here is pretty free. The only real thing you have to be worried about is if the CTs, you know, immediately swing like this. That can sometimes be annoying. Um, I have a counter for people who play like this, and that is I will go into Palace and I will go and sit like this behind the, the vase. Um, you can kill the first player, and it, even if they swing with two, um, typically one swings this way and the other will like run like this. And I think this position is like a, a good one where you can like get the first kill and then even you know be ready for a second. Um, so yeah, you can try that out. The only other angle you need to be worried about is some AWP players like to start in Palace. And I think most of them sit like this. That's at least how I do it. You hold the, the back pillar, but you leave this one open. Um, it's because people typically peek this from the back pillar if they want to peek it. And if they try to move close, they will be peeking it from, from close here, where you will have like a big advantage because um, the the T is closer uh, than them. But just in case someone wants to peek it from, from this, um, I think if you would hold a too tight line like this, this guy can see your leg uh, potentially. So that's at least, I think, the reasoning why I'm always sitting like this, but maybe it's just a feeling. Um, also, if you sit like this, this is kind of the anticipated angle for the T. So he will try to jiggle this, but if you sit like this, it's like a slight off angle and maybe you will be able to kill him on his jiggle. Um, these are basically the only worries you have as a, as a, as a T when you're taking the map control on uh, Palace. And uh, yeah, there really isn't a whole lot else to say about that. Um, I think, you know, the only thing you can do is you can always jump across this angle and or like even just run across. You you will so rarely die if you try to full run across. You can clear this, you can do the Molotov yourself. And even if you want to do something spicy, I mean, you can underhand a, flat, uh, a smoke here. And something I think not enough people know is if you are in the corner, you crouch and you aim here. This is a flash that bounces here and goes up and lands up here. Um, you know, it takes some angles, like actually quite a few. Um, and yeah, it, it's a kind of underused flash um, because it's a, almost like a self pop flash. Like you throw it and you can go out with it because it won't blind you with the way it lands. So that's good to know. And then, yeah, you could potentially, you know, do do this, do this flash and like, oh, sorry. Do this and do this flash and, you know, go out with it. Um, so yeah, you can try that. That's, I guess, some way of, of working map control. Um, slope is somewhat the same. Typically you can get this area of slope for free. It's as soon as we want to take any further space that we are in a pickle. Um, I know back in the day, people had a lineup, or maybe I even remember it. You would get stuck here, and you would aim here, I think. And this would be a um, lurk smoke. I think if you would throw it in CS2, because this was the CS go lineup, you would probably throw the same, but maybe with a sneak step, um, since smokes are bigger. But basically, this smoke allows you to go out slope um, without being spotted. And the way it worked in CSGO was you could, you know, jump up here, which I guess still kind of works, and, and play around the smoke and even go down here and, like, move around the smoke if you want. Um, it gives you some unique properties. You can also, you know, if you land the smoke like this, um, use it to sneak through right side and go to sandwich. Which, you know, it is a risk, but it is a pretty solid play as well. And either way, it just makes it really difficult for the CT to defend the A side, because 
they don't know how many are outslope. And uh, just like the Luxembourg and Anubis, you can go two sides, so it's hard for the CT to uh, hold both in a, in a good way. Now, um, I know there was a lineup from spawn. I'm going to be honest and say I have no idea where it would even be. Um, it was actually not horrible. But I think actually maybe it was even from over here or something like this. At least there is definitely a way where you can throw this same lurk smoke but from spawn and have it bounce. Um, at least in CSGO the way you would have it was I think it bounced like pretty pretty much like that. But I think in fact it's easier in CS2 because um, you can throw it really high up. Maybe even higher. Maybe something like this. And get it to land pretty far out. Let's see where this one lands. That was definitely too high. Um, let let me let me cook uh, real quick. Uh, top of the door. Because I think this is actually a really good smoke if I find the lineup for solo queue. Maybe the carpet. I think the. I'm not aiming. Uh, I mean, we're getting very close, but I'm, I'm not aiming enough to the left. So maybe here with the door and the carpet meets. Maybe the angle will make it bounce less. Let's see. So this is pretty much what I would be going for. I do think um, there's probably a lineup where you can maybe like this would probably go too far if you do W jump throw. But I think having the smoke further in CS2 is, is um, advantageous. Like, this is too far. Let me try one more time, and otherwise I will I will give up on this. So maybe if we go up to this corner and do W jump throw, maybe even uh, something like this. I just want to see the result. See, this smoke I think could be quite good. Maybe slightly closer. Um, but something that makes it so you have the one-way properties on the left side but also kind of have the one-way properties on if you go to sandwich and you like basically can check this with with the cover of the smoke i'm sure there's a lineup and i think it would not take me more than five minutes to find but just for the sake of not wanting to find this live i, I won't be doing it now um i think something like getting the smoke to land here is the ideal lineup it will allow you space to come out um it will allow you space to you know play kind of one way around this and even you know sneak around it and and drop down and clear sh uh, shadow without exposing yourself to sandwich or really stairs or jungle but it will also make it so that um It gives you kind of these, uh, what I said, one-way properties on the sandwich side. Like, default won't be able to see me as I sneak in here. And CT can't see me either because of the angle. So it's only if I go here. I'm sure I can even optimize this smoke a little further. But this is the rough idea of how I would, I would want this smoke to land. So, okay. That is, um, that is that. I guess taking further space. I've shown these lineups uh, very recently. So I'll just show them again. But... You can do this and do that. That is a... I actually fucked it up. Try to aim as far right without hitting the wall as possible. Bruh. It's good that I'm no longer a player. This lens inside connector. There's also this lineup. Bomb. There's also this lineup. Bomb. So this one is for jungle and this one is for top gun. Oh my god, that was not what i wanted but you know i ain't even mad <laughs> no uh, smoke. yeah exactly it looks pretty good um but yeah this is how to um take take further map control in my opinion for uh yeah taking mid there is a there is this lineup and i i, I somehow keep forgetting it is it like that no there is a lineup um, where you have a smoke that bounces back. Okay. Um, there is a lineup for a top mid smoke that lands like right around here, which is like very meta. 
Uh, I've talked about it before, but... Left, left. What, sorry? Uh, the, the left side of the antenna. Like the... Uh, here? Or here? No, no, like where you aim, but mirrored to the left side. Oh, like this? You mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you need uh, you need to stand uh, next to yeah. the trash. Okay. Yeah. It's so nice that you guys know the liners when I clearly don't. So this one is interesting because you can you can boost over, you can check window, you can also swing left side of it in front of the boxes, and it, it gives you kind of this feeling of having a, an advantage. Um, there's also the window smoke. I recommend learning them from spawn. Like the different spawn smokes, but here are two uh, window smokes. There's this one, which is just you hold D and you do normal jump roll. And if I didn't fuck it up, it should land in window. Oh my god, that is actually just so unfortunate. Um, I, this one is actually so much more failable than it was in CSGO. But this is how it normally lands. There's this lineup. There's also this lineup. Uh, here. You walk as far as you can, you jump throw, goes over, hits this wall, it hits the side, bang bang, goes into window, and I do even have one more lineup if I remember it. Uh, I don't think I do. Wait, was this W jump throw? Or was it normal jump throw? I think. Uh, actually, it might have been on this and normal jump throw. Let me just check here real quick. It looks like it was W jump throw. But I think we all, we almost have him. Um, just to give you guys some alternatives. Okay. Here, I think. Let's hope. Crossing our fingers. I I need to uh, I need to. Uh, like that. If I don't get it now, then just know that this is possible. Okay, this is possible, guys. Um, just not for me, apparently. The worst thing is, I think it even is normal jump throw. And I think I've just been failing it. But anyway, um, it definitely isn't like this. But the idea is basically that it bounces like that and goes into the window. So if you want this uh, lineup, you can you can learn yourself. Um, for smoking top con, you can do it from here. Bang. And also, if you go here, I believe you, this palm tree used to move in CSGO, but it doesn't anymore. And uh, I think maybe it's like here or something. There is a lineup for a top gun smoke. I think this would actually still actually smoke top gun. Um, but yeah, you could probably aim slightly more left um, and it will, it will land better. Not exactly like that, but again, I'm giving you the blueprint. Uh, you can you can uh, Google or, or find these lines yourself. It's it's really not hard. Um, but yeah, that's taking space in mid, pretty much. There are some key flashes as well. One of them, this one, that blinds connector. You can flash also behind the boxes, so that when people are pushing mid, they get blind. And also there's the VP flash, which is really key. You go up here, you aim here, you take a sneak step. And this one, if I threw it right, will blind any orb who is standing here. Uh, or here, maybe. Yes. But it won't blind someone standing up here, so that's worth knowing. Um, towards B, it is, again, kind of like... There isn't a whole lot of map control you can't gain for free. You can at least get to this kitchen for free majority of the time. If you're afraid there's an orb, um, I've shown this flash before, but you can do a self pop flash by bouncing it off this. And uh, it's really cool. If you take a sneak step, it will blind the person standing on this side of the balcony. If you take a running step, it will bind the, the orb playing on this side of the balcony. So that's good to know. There is also and I, I haven't done this for a while, so this will probably fail. I don't even really remember where I was lining it up. But I, did, I had a lineup at some point where... <coughs> this doesn't look quite right, but it's close. Um, I just want people to know... Oh, actually, this might be... I mean, this is not exactly what I was trying, but 
It kind of works. Again, works. new small contact. Yeah. Um, I wanted to land on the balcony. Um, I think even I was standing here. Or maybe in the middle of this white page. Again, if you really want this smoke lineup, now you know it, ex it exists somewhere. Yeah, this definitely does work. Um, I do actually have a, a, a little bit of idea, so I want to just test this. Because what if you do the smoke and it lands on the balcony? And what if you move out without getting spotted, which is obviously a little bit difficult? And you go on top here. Can you blow the smoke by throwing it here? You kind of can. And I think the closer you get it to land here, the more this will work. I think if you if you need even in this corner, maybe it will work. No. But you could have a grenade liner from a teammate like this that blows the smoke and you can use this to check and if they're not here go through that's kind of interesting actually but yeah here is a, a smoke uh, that you could potentially throw i think also um this is still possible to throw a smoke that lands on the left side and um, you can land it like this like deep in the corner but you can also it's not as useful in uh, cs2 I think also you have to adapt your lineup a bit. But if you get a smoke that lands here, it covers the windows and you can potentially sneak like right side and try to put pressure or take map control. But again, there isn't a whole lot of solo map control you can take as a T on, on Rush. So this is uh, this is the best I can offer. Um, yeah. Any questions? Um, I have something. Why do, uh, why do uh, some teams throw a top mid smoke uh, and a window smoke as T from spawn? Um, I think it's because you know the window smoke here can be blown up very easily, and if you have the top mid smoke as well to play behind, then um, you won't be spotted if this happens. Another thing is that in pro teams, you know, the the main thing is people will go here and they will do this lineup to multiple behind boxes. And if you have the top of smoke, you actually have somewhere to go if the Molotov is thrown. Yeah. Um, and since the AWP player is typically the one who will be nading the like, he will be doing the the, the behind boxes mono and then be nading the top mid smoke. If you have window smoke as well, the orb has to use his nade on this. Um, and if he just nades the top mid smoke, even if he has a lineup for it, he won't be able to check it from window. So it just gives more space to play, um, I think is, is the idea. And I think also it is that the window smoke can sometimes make it hard to come out mid. Because if they have an orb in con, it can still be hard for T's to go out. But if you, use, if you see the top mid smoke as the smoke that allows you to kind of get out into mid and then you see the window smoke as the one that allowed to take further space then um each has like a unique uh, property that is important okay yes any other questions would you say this is useful in in facet box or yes is it more like... absolutely yeah. and i think even a lot of people also do this combo which was really meta at the start of Season 2, I think it still kind of is. Um, you can get the smoke to land better, so it fully covers, but then with these like smokes, you get you don't have the top mid smoke, so you can't really hide if they mull the boxes and nade the smoke, but you don't have to worry about the AWP player from Con killing you, so it allows you to um, come out. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no Any other questions, guys? All right. Well, I have to wake up in seven hours, so I will uh, take the opportunity now to uh, end the session. Then, um, if you have any questions, you are always welcome to slide into my Discord DMs. Um, I can't promise you a fast answer, but I can promise you an, an answer eventually. And um, 
yeah i want to just thank you guys so much for for watching the the video and also the live session here at the ghost academy i hope uh, it was useful i think it's at least a lot of uh, really important information yeah thank you nato yeah